Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at running Linux officially on Chrome OS devices like Chrome Boxes or running them on Chrome Books like you see here. And we're going to be looking at uh, how Google is implementing this officially in the operating system and how if you have a compatible device, you can turn it on and start installing some of your favorite Linux apps on your device. We're going to look at both an ARM-based Chromebook and an Intel-based Chrome box in this video. And I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for the Chrome box with my own funds. We'll be having a review of this coming up shortly here on the channel. And the Asus Chromebook Flip here came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program. However, nobody is paying for this review and no one has reviewed what you're about to see before it was uploaded and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now, starting with how to get this operating and what you can do with it. Now, Google calls this project Crostini and there is a great subreddit up already so you can get all the information and help you need to get started. There's a lot of people doing a lot of cool stuff in here. And what you wanna do is make sure that your Chromebook or Chromebox is compatible. So right now, uh, there's only a handful of devices that work, including the Google Pixel Book, the Samsung Chromebook Plus, the Asus Flip C101, which is this one. Uh, this is a revision. There was another version, the uh, C100, I believe, that is not compatible. So you wanna make sure you got the right device here to get everything working. Uh, and of course, the Chrome box that we've got here works and a few other devices too. There are more coming though. And I'm sure that as time rolls on, just like we saw with the Android apps, more and more devices will be compatible. Now, what's great is that it is really easy to get this to work now if you have a compatible device. It wasn't as easy a week ago, so they're making uh, a lot of strides here on this as time goes on. So what you want to do uh, is go over to your gear icon here on your Chrome box or Chromebook and go over to the settings menu. Go over to About Chrome OS, and what you want to do is go over to the uh, detailed build information, and then you want to click on Change Channel, and you can see here I am currently on the developer unstable build, uh, because this at the moment, and this might change, is the only build right now that supports the Linux applications. Now after you do this, your Chromebook or Chromebox will ask you to do a power wash, which will basically start you back off from scratch with the device completely wiped out. So if you have something stored on it, get it off because it will uh, erase everything in the process. But once that process is complete and you go back here to settings, you're now going to have an option for Linux beta and you can go over here and just enable uh, that feature. Right now I've already got it installed so I can take it off again if I want, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, it downloads a 300 megabyte file and then it is good to go. And then all you need to do is click on your launcher. You'll see a terminal app showing up in that shelf there. And when you click on that, up comes your terminal window and you can begin installing software. Now the way this works is that it sets up what's called a container. So everything you run in Linux is largely isolated from the rest of the operating system, but they do have a means of transiting files back and forth into your Linux container that's running on your device. So you can see here in the file manager, I have a new option for Linux files. And if I copy a file into this, uh, it will show up in there. So my Steam games are in there. I'll show you how that works in a minute. You can see also that I copied over a, a space shuttle photo and a word template. And if I go over here to my directory, you can see those in there right now. So there, there is some way to easily get files back and forth without having to go FTP them in uh, to that uh, container directly. And that's a nice thing to see there. And again, these are the features that are getting uh, added very quickly as they continue working on this. Now, once you get it installed, uh, you do have to get all of your apps installed through the command line. So for example, if I wanted to install an app here, I have to type sudo app get install, and we're going to type in nano, which is a great text editor, uh, which was uh, authored by one of our uh, Patreon supporters, Chris Allegretta. And you can see here now, it is basically downloaded that application. I can now run it from the command line and get into Nano. And that same process is something you can use to install graphical user interface type of applications. And what's cool is that if you install something like uh, the, uh, the GIMP uh, image editor here, I'll just load that up real quick. 
uh, it will actually show up inside your application launcher here on your Chromebook or Chromebox. So you can see here, if I scroll down, we've got uh, LibreOffice and a few other applications that I've already installed here, uh, very easily accessible, uh, and they load up alongside my uh, other uh, Chrome OS uh, browser windows or my Android apps too. In fact, I can maybe load up Twitter here while we're uh, working on stuff. And this is my Android version of Twitter uh, that is running alongside a Linux application here. And I can go over to Open Recent here and load up that Space Shuttle image if I want and start uh, working on it here. Now we're on an Intel-based device right now, so you can see how it operates here. It's pretty snappy, as you can see. And we'll switch over to ARM in a few minutes and see how that one does there. So pretty cool stuff. Uh, not all that hard to get it up and running now. If you uh, followed me over the last couple of years, I think about three or four years ago now, we tried to get the Crouton uh, Linux installation working on a Chrome device. Wasn't as easy as this, so we've seen uh, tremendous progress here as Google is getting ready to more tightly integrate Linux apps into Chrome OS. And if you're an advanced Linux user, you can install your apps by compiling them. I think you could probably get other package managers running on these things too. Uh, just know again, you're in a container, so you can't really break out of that container and interact with the Chrome OS operating system. I was also curious to see what kind of performance we would get running Steam on this. So I did install Steam on this over the weekend here. Let me get back down to my uh, app shelf here. I'm not used to seeing this many apps on my uh, Chrome OS devices here. So I got the Linux version of Steam installed on that Crostini uh, subreddit. They actually show you how to use uh, the Wine uh, thing to be able to get the Windows version to run on here too. So let me log in real quick and we'll see what we can get to run. So I have the Linux version of Steam running now and you can see some of the games that I have installed. And I thought I would try out Shovel Knight, which usually runs pretty well on these mini PCs, on the Windows side at least, just to see how things work. And one thing I noticed so far is that there doesn't seem to be a lot of optimization for graphics or audio just yet. So this is probably not going to be a great gaming experience, but nonetheless, we're loading up Linux games on a Chrome box in Chrome OS uh, using an officially sanctioned means of doing so from Google, which I think is pretty darn cool. And you'll see here just how slow Shovel Knight runs here once we jump into the game. So you can already see the menus are kind of going slower than uh, they might otherwise on a uh, dedicated Windows or Linux operating system. But if we jump into the uh, level here, you'll see just how slow it goes. I'm not sure exactly on the frame rate right now, but I would imagine it's probably uh, in the 10 to 15 uh, frames per second category, if not much lower than that. So you can see as he comes in here, it just... Uh, is not running at the speed that this game was designed to run at, which is usually 60 frames per second. So we're not quite there yet on gaming, but they do run, and I would imagine as this gets optimized, we will see uh, much better performance, just like we did with Android uh, apps and games that got better as time went on as they were refining uh, that ability to run those apps on the Chrome OS platform. And it's also running quite nicely on these ARM-based devices too. Uh, this is running with a Rock Chip processor, the newer Rock Chip that's starting to show up on some of these Chromebooks. I'll put a link to the review down in the video description. Uh, so you can see here a lot of the apps are compiled for ARM, so they uh, just install via the package manager without having to do anything special. And we've got uh, my space shuttle image here. I can zoom in on it and get to work on it doing whatever. So it seems like it's uh, working pretty nicely. Other apps are running very nicely too. So we can load up uh, LibreOffice stuff here and get to work on those. And I've been really pleased with just how fast everything feels on this. It really feels as good as it does on a low-end Intel device, but we're running with a more power-efficient ARM processor here. So I think if you are looking to do some Linux apps that are not games, uh, this is something really to try out if you have a compatible device. You are going to be on the less stable developer channel until they make this uh, containerized Linux system available on some of the other more stable channels, which I would expect to happen in the near future. And I think it's a really positive direction for the Chrome operating system. Now, definitely keep an eye on the Crostini subreddit because there is stuff happening almost every day as this feature continues to develop, and it's developing quite rapidly. So this is a great place to keep up with all of it. Also keep an eye on the compatibility list because if you are in the market for a Chromebook or a Chromebox and you don't see it on the compatibility list, you might want to wait because I think they're really focusing on uh, only the very new devices that are currently 
out or coming out very shortly as opposed to trying to get it on older ones. I was very happy to see that the uh, Chromebook Flip here, which did come out a couple of months ago, is compatible, but the prior version of it with a different rock chip processor that was out just a year ago is not compatible and likely never will be. So again, if this is an important feature to you, hold off until you know you're going to be able to run these Linux apps on your particular device. And again, that uh, subreddit there is going to be a very useful resource. We'll probably update this video as this feature improves and gets moved over to the more stable channels of Chrome OS. And I'm very eager to see how this might start impacting consumers as well, because the way they're developing this thing really makes me think that they want to make this a consumer feature more than just a developer feature, especially given how isolated it is inside of the box. So we'll see more with this, I'm sure, as the months progress here. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters of the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.